This will be our initial example for something that works. Okay. So let's define S to be, now note, this is not SN, it's not a partial sum, this thing's going to go forever. Okay. I'm going to start at half this time. Um, you will see why later on. Uh, I'm going to start at half rather than one, like I've been starting at all these times. And I'm going to make my ratio also a half. Okay, so every term is getting half the size of the previous one. Okay. Now, I'm just going to do a tiny little segue here, tiny little segue, and I want to point out something which seems like it would be why this works, but in fact is not, and I'll probably deal with it in period three rather than ham up our working now. Do you see, let's, um, let's just borrow this language over here, right? Do you notice that one of the main differences between all of these series that don't work and this series that does is that the limit as n approaches infinity of each individual term, just the individual terms, what's that limit going towards? A, three small a half, and then a quarter, and then an eighth, and then a sixteenth. Zero. They're clearly going towards zero, right? In fact, that is kind of behaving like this, only faster, because rather than going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the denominator, I'm going 2, 4, 8, 16 on the denominator. Does that make sense? So each individual term is doing what this is doing. So it's going towards zero. Now, you might think that's enough to make this converge, right? Just like this does, right? But in fact, that property alone is not enough. It's insufficient. It looks like it's enough, but it's not. And later on, I'll prove why, OK? What I really want is I need some help from the partial sum, OK? So this is the whole thing. But I want a snapshot of what's happening at each point in time. And then I'm really going to see what's happening. Because then, you know, this is what my definition of the whole series was. It's the limit of the partial sum, where it's going. So, first term. Think back to your recursive definition, right? S1 is just equal to term 1, which is a half. When you add a quarter to that, that's your second term coming along for the ride. A half is two quarters, so you add one quarter on, so you're going to get three quarters. Then you're going to get, when you add an eighth onto that, seven eighths. Okay, good. Now, I actually, from here, remember, three terms is enough to establish a pattern for any sequence, even if it's not an AP or a GP, right? What's happening? What would SN, what would that look like? Hmm, have a look. You carefully look at the numbers here, right? Um, for example, have a look at 2, and then 4, and then 8. Where are these numbers coming from in relation to n, to 1, 2, and 3? They're, they're the corresponding powers of 2, right? Do you see that? They're the corresponding powers of 2. 2 is the, is the first power of 2. 4 is the second power of 2. 8 is the third power of 2. Yep. So on the denominator, what do I have? 2 to the power of n. Are you content with that? Yes. On the numerator, I always have exactly one less than that. Right, you can go to the next one, it'll be 15 on 16, and then 31 on 32, and so on. So I've got 2 to the n minus 1. You okay with that? Hmm. All right, now I want to think here. By definition, right, by definition, s is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of this thing, right? Uh, s of n. So if I take the limit of the left hand side, I better take the limit of the right hand side. Limit as n approaches infinity of this thing. 2 to the n minus 1. OK, now just get your head back in, in limit land, right, for a second. At the moment, I cannot just simply evaluate this limit. Just like with first principles, you can't just put in h equals 0. Why can't I do that? At least not yet. Because 2 to the power of infinity is just still infinity. Yeah, this thing's going to blow up. And this thing's going to blow up, OK? And so I've got kind of, in a way of thinking, I've got infinity over infinity. And the problem with thinking about something like that and saying, oh, why isn't it just equal to, if they're both infinity, why isn't it just equal to 1? And the answer is, well, there are different kinds of infinity, OK? Um, I'm not going to make a big argument about it now, but there are different kinds. So you can't just simply evaluate. But we used to do some algebraic tricks, do you remember, like with first principles? If we did something like this. Um, 
do you remember, if I was differentiating, say, the square root of x, this is what I'd get. What did we do to that thing in order to let us evaluate at h equals 0? What did I have to do? What algebraic trick did I pull out of my pocket? I'd rationalize the numerator, which is a bit unusual, right? But once you do that, um, that h can disappear off the denominator, and you're fine, right? What will I do here? Yeah, I've got one fraction, which is usually a good thing, but I'm going to break it apart because then I can evaluate, right? So this left-hand side, by definition, is S. You okay with that? And then on the right-hand side, I still have the limits. But what I get is 2 to the n on 2 to the n, which is 1. Take away 1 on 2 to the n. Ha, ah, now I've got something I can do with that, okay? Infinity on infinity, that's a problem. But 1 on infinity, I know exactly what that does. That does this. In fact, that, that's exactly what it does, right? So it does it even faster. So now I have an answer here, right? This is 1 take away 0. I'm going to write that take away 0 in because it shows I know what's happening to this rather than it just being you know, disappearing. Okay? So s equals 1. All right? Now hold on a second. What are we saying? We're saying that this series up here, half, plus a quarter, plus an eighth, all the way. If you add up an infinite number of terms, it approaches one. Now, it's the partial approaches. sum approaches one. So I define this thing, inverted commas, the whole series, if you can put infinity in your hand, I define it to be one. This thing gets a name, okay? This thing. It's really a limit. Do you see that? And it's kind of the limit of all the partial sums. They can't get any further than one. So therefore, what I call this, and this will be your heading too, I call this the limiting sum. Limiting sum. Do you see? It's all about limits, right? Question. So, um, no, it's sum related to limiting sum. Okay. Um, so you see how on, on the left side you have the conversion and diversion. Yep. Shouldn't it? Isn't it really confusing if you drew um, the parts that are not needed? Because um, you're only taking right of the y axis. Mm -hmm. You're not only taking terms. You mean why am I thinking about these guys? Yeah. Well, I define where I'm looking by, by according to this, according to what the limits are saying. Right, not according to what part of the graph is there. So I can look at any part I like. For example, on the same rounds, I could say limit as n approaches negative infinity, and I can think about the limit as n approaches zero, and I can think about and so on. So yeah. In the context, I don't think it's so bad. I wanted to make the connection to the Sum and limit Summit. Yeah. Why don't you go approach the um, the Fields Medal Committee? The Fields Medal is the mathematical equivalent of the Nobel Prize, and go make that suggestion to them. Just, I would love to see that adopted. Okay. Well, technically, it is the sum. Whoops. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. You remember I said this is an interesting series. So what I want to do is I want to try and convince you of this, but in a less formal way and the way that I think is very appealing, and I hope we'll seal it for you. And then we will generalize this result. Okay. So remember I said I started at half rather than one. Why did I do that? Okay. Here's why. I want you to imagine, and in fact, not just imagine. I want you to draw with me a square. Make it reasonable size. And let's imagine that this square has a side, oh, that's a terrible square, anyway, it has a side length of 1, okay? If it has a side length of 1, what's the area of this square? 1 by 1. 1 by 1, which is 1. one. Cubic Thumbs centimeter. up so far, okay? Right, square unit. centimeter. Okay, oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, or square no, unit. Sorry. Square unit. So, so the area of this square is 1. Are you satisfied with that? Okay, now... I can find within this square, and in fact, there are lots of um, series I can do this with. I can find this series in this square. How would these, if these were areas, right, how might they appear within my square? Yeah. It's like A4 paper. Like, you know, you have like A4 uh, yeah, paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, if, for those of you who don't know, like A4 paper is twice the size of A5 paper, which is the, twice the size of A6 paper, and so on. Okay? So I'm going to do something similar here, but not quite. If I have my one meter square, or one unit square, and I divide it in half, and I'd like you to divide it as well. Okay. On the left hand side here, and the right hand side, I have two rectangles, 
because down the middle, equal area. So what's the area of this rectangle over here? It's a half. Okay. Now, whatever area of units it is. Now, I can have the first term there. I have the second term as well. I'm going to take this rectangle over here, and I will also divide it in half. I hope you can see why I'm dividing in half. Right? Because that's the common ratio. So that's how I'm going to geometrically, geometrically, GP, that's how I'm going to do this. Okay? How am I going to get an eighth in here? Well, I'm going to take this a quarter that's left over. I'll divide this guy as well. Now, you can do this next construction in a, in a variety of ways, but here's my favorite way because I think it looks the best. Okay? Um, this, whatever shape is left over, if I keep halving it and halving it, and halving it, and now I can't write any more. Okay. What is this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, it's slightly different, but you're on the right track. Um, what's happening here? If I keep on subdividing, note this, if I subdivide forever, Right? And I have to do it forever, because if I stop at any arbitrary point, even if it's like n equals a million, right, there will still be a tiny little spot that I haven't covered. Right? But if I go forever, then the sum of all these individual areas, namely a half plus a quarter plus eight, and so on, the sum of all of the areas combined is just equal to the original square. Right? Like I will have the whole square covered, provided I go to infinity. Right? So that's a nice visual way of demonstrating. And there are lots of other visual ways. Um, go look up, a, um, look up a book online called Proofs Without Words, um, which is where I got this from. Uh, it's a classic way to demonstrate that this is equal to 1. There's another really depressing way that talks about a frog that's really far away from, let's, well, not really far. It's one meter away from water. And for some reason, he gets, he's like dying of thirst. So he's like progressively more tired every time he jumps. So you can only jump half of the distance that he sees in front of him, which is um, <laughs> just really a morbid way to demonstrate this, so I prefer the square. So, so how do you jump um, one, so one thousand two hundred? Well, not, not only apparently is he starving and tired, but he's also very good at measuring. So, <laughs> 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 